Um, okay, everybody, uh, welcome uh, to this webinar. Um, as you can see, I have a couple of friends uh, with me, uh, Sandro uh, Pereira and from, uh, from Portugal and uh, Tom Cantor. And uh, as you are probably aware, uh, the three of us are working on, uh, on a book about business migrating, which is the, to the topic of this, uh, of this webinar. Um, so, yeah, um, Sandro, Tom, uh, welcome uh, to this webinar as well. Uh, well, it has been uh, quite a journey, this, uh, this book, uh, working on it, uh, well, uh, what is uh, more than a year, meanwhile. Uh, but, well, yeah, finally we are getting there, and the book is uh, almost out, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's great. Um, yeah, so we're going to tell a little bit um, uh, what all is covered in the book during this, uh, this webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, there is a Q&A section in, uh, in the GoToWebinar. So if you have anything, uh, we will go across all the questions uh, later on uh, during the webinar. So let's just uh, kick off. I'm going to the next slide and then, uh, well, yeah, let's move on. Uh, uh, Sandro, yeah, awesome. over to you. Okay, next slide, please. So <laughs> the reason of, uh, <laughs> first of all, thanks for being here. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and speak. No, go back to, uh, Lex, to the next, uh, the oh, previous gosh, slide. I was, I was afraid for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for being here, and it's a pleasure for me to be here and work with these two amazing guys that in the call. Uh, so the reason of this book is about well, this 2020 was released last 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 year. Uh, we know that last year was kind of a crazy year. Um, even many of migrations uh, that were uh, scheduled, uh, they were a little postponed. Uh, I see, at least I saw that in in, in my work. Uh, and it, as you already know, uh, um, there isn't too much new in 2020. This is just an evolution about uh, uh, 2016. Uh, so there is a new uh, uh, environment support, uh, um, extensive support uh, for, for, for 2020. Um, we have new, um, new features, uh, of course. We have a better hybrid integration with new adapters, application lifecycle, uh, XSL 3.0 and so on. Something is nothing new that you guys are uh, already aware about that. And this is uh, uh, the reason of this book is in fact uh, all of uh, current migrations and future migrations that are going to happen from previous versions of Pistol to 2020. So go ahead, next, uh, Lex, to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, so, like Lex told you, uh, we are working on the on the book. It's finished. Uh, at least our job is finished. It's in the, in the progress of uh, closing and wrap everything and put uh, in the printer. Um, so this is more or less about 400 pages uh, about everything that is related with migration. Uh, all that you need to know uh, in terms of testing, managing, architects, developers. So there is something there for each uh, role that you play on this, uh, on this product. Uh, so as a manager, you want to know what is it difficult to migrate from one environment to the other. And architect, we need to um, think about we need to redesign or refactoring something and so on. So, uh, and developers indeed they have to do it. Uh, but there are also the administration that is a key part of migration because they need to prepare the new environment. They need to put it everything running uh, um, for the um, staff that develops will uh, will deliver. No, so. Uh, all of these will be addressed in this book. That's why there is almost about 400 pages uh, on the book. Uh, guys, feel free to interrupt me, okay? This is not one way. Yeah, 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 certainly. Yeah, no, Next it's completely slide. true what you say. Also, the book will be printed in full color with uh, plenty of screenshots and plenty of resources uh, to, to yeah. access. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so clearly, yeah, we think that uh, this book will uh, add value uh, well, when you have to migrate uh, to, to Business Server 2020. But, Nia, yeah, let me move on to the next slide. So, we, uh, 
who is the team behind that? And so all of the, the actors are the three of us that are here, me, Tom Cantor, and uh, Lex, uh, you know these guys for sure. Uh, we have two amazing review, uh, Steve Lenkow and uh, Joanne, that they did just amazing job. No? Um, we are good technical uh, um, technical people. No? We know Bissell, but we are horrible uh, uh, writers. No? And these guys uh, made an amazing, amazing job. <laughs> I don't know how many hours they spent. No? Um, reviewing, rewriting, uh, do all the feedback. They were really, really amazing. Yeah, and, um, late hours and very inconvenient timings and providing them terrible content. <laughs> <laughs> huge job, so huge thanks to Steve and Joanne. Exactly, yes, and we we have this amazing lady you guys know it from the beast talk space for sure she was the lady in charge of all the documentation that it was monday uh, he, she did the foreword for the book uh, we invite her to do and she was really happy and say yes i will join and i will do that uh, for sure so we are really happy uh, on the end result and uh, this was really an amazing team and i i already wrote a book i'm not uh, I, uh, I did one book that took me one year and a half probably uh, was the mapping uh, this was my first experience and um, but this one was really really challenged because all of these COVID situation and um, the nightmare of being working at home with kids, homeschooling, <laughs> and, and still uh, writing time to to write this. Um, this was really, really a challenge. Um, I speak for me, and I I, see, I think I speak for all of the three of us. Uh, well, different yeah. challenge, of course, no, but. Uh, um we had to um he do our uh, daily day to fit all of these and well i i'm really really happy with the with the end result no um, yeah. go ahead tom yeah. Alex, the next slide yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we really can't wait until we have the book in our in our heads so we'll, also we yeah. have to be patient but yeah so yeah. we have uh, you know you guys uh, uh, you know a lot of bizalk i'm not here to explain what is bizalk to you guys and you know that we have this is the uh, uh, 10 version uh, how much version 12 versions correct and uh, one two yeah. three four five yeah that's, that's one right uh, in 20 years, so this is quite a stable product. And uh, uh, um, the main uh, goal of this book was take everything from 2010 and migrate to 2020. You know? This book will cover for sure everything from 20, 2010 to 2020. That's uh, kind of 10 years uh, uh, that uh, this book is talking. But most of the of the stuff, in fact, goes to 24. So we go sometimes to 24, and this will cover all the migration. Uh, okay. Of course, not in place migration because that's uh, impossible, insane. Um, but uh, side by side migration, there are a lot of stuff that you still can use uh, to migrate 24 to 2020. Okay. Um, 20 and 22 is out of uh, the scope because man, this is the same of uh, moving to Azure. You need to redesign, redesign everything. You know, <laughs> it's a complete. It yeah, yeah, you it have to red redesign. So um, and um, actually, uh, at least luckily for me, I'm not aware anymore uh, any client that used 2022. 20, uh, I still know 24, but not 22. Um, uh, so, well, 
this uh, book will cover almost uh, for sure 10 and goes to 16 years of uh, the product and migrate to, to the latest version. Okay. Go ahead to the next one, please. And uh, Tom, take it over. No? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So, um, so what we're doing here on the next slide is we're kind of outlining um, what what we, um, in, in summary, what Sandro has been saying about um, as this the purpose of the slide is, you know, what am I what am I looking at um, and uh, how difficult it is. And starting from the left, of course, the 2013-2016, we're in the supported zone. All of the components, well. Um, uh, some components uh, 2013 are no longer supported. So it is a mandatory upgrade if you want to stay in support range. But the upgrade is supported. If within your the, the, the supported range, of course, Microsoft support is always more than willing to help as much as they can, but you're not inside of a, a supported service uh, zone. Um, this talk. And uh, 2010, the reason it's medium easy is because it continues to be, it's a, it was a lot of the major changes of features and functionality uh, remain the same from BizTalk Server 2010 uh, to, to date. And although it's out of a supported range, at least it's uh, functionally uh, got all the elements. There are gotchas that we talk, talk about in the book. There are a lot of gotchas in, in that upgrade. Um, that that you would easily miss. Um, so just be aware that you should should review that. Some of them having to do with EDI and mapping and so on and so forth. But it's uh, doable. Um, when we step back in the uh, well, in 2004 is its own uh, own special um, element. But the uh, 2006, 2006 R2, and 2009, the the core engine of BizTalk Server um, was there, and the migration, although is difficult, um, it's not impossible. Of course, 2004 is its own realm because it, of course, was .NET 1.1 um, and a completely different .NET. You know, the .NET engine was completely different. So there's some complexity there. We step back to the pre-2004 range that was uh, when BizTalk Server came over from Commerce Server and was migrated and was a, is a C++ product, um, the entire engine was different, uh, the database structure was different, the functionality was completely different, um, and so that is a uh, just a hand rewrite of the application and business code. So that one is a like Sandra said, very similar to what you would do. Although I'm going to say not as easy as it would be to make the leap to Azure, but uh, it would be very difficult to do because you're starting over, right? It's just, what does this business tool do at this point and then rebuild that from scratch? So we want to look at each one of those and and you know, try to explain the um, plus and minus aspects of each one of those uh, uh, steps in there. But I do know that a lot of uh, customers are being driven due to the support boundaries out of this, finally out of this, like server 2013 um, and into, and the leak to this like 2020 is certainly there. So, you know, each one of these, um, I, I love the Rubik's Cube uh, icon for the uh, 2004 to 2009 one, that was perfect. Um, uh, but, um, you know, each one of these has their own um, special scenarios and situations that you need to deal with. Um, Lex did a great job of the EDI migration and trading partner migration in in his explanation how to do those migrations. So the mapping we've explained pretty well, um, and there are a couple of gotchas to do with the ESP toolkit, which I don't know anything about. Um, so uh, you know that was that's covered in there. So that was that was very um, useful, you know, for us, for me personally, to go back and re review this because there was a lot of things that. I had to look back at my notes from doing migrations and go, oh my goodness, this was very hard. What what in the world were we thinking? So uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that was those were the we, so we went we went crazy. You know, it's not about migrating schemas and mappings. We speak about ADI. We speak about uh, 
um, cross reference. We speak about BAM uh, and right. migrated BAM with data. Uh, so accelerators, Asia Seven. Yeah. Uh, accelerator. It's it's an accelerator. <laughs> I don't know if you anybody's ever used the cross reference API stuff, but we have, uh, you know, I actually pulled up a tool and recompiled it that I had written back in 2006 uh, and put that out on our on our portal. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what was the there was the one? Um, well, anyway, we'll we'll cover that in a minute. But you know, this the goal here is what is my scale factor as far as effort. Um, and then I think a part we also have to say behind this is the benefit. And the benefit is your transition to a final structure is is to the you know this October 2020. You know you have a stable, uh, well understood platform that you know will continue to support it. Um, uh, and I will put in a plug here. Um, you know uh, we're. You know the life cycle of this hoc server is you know uh, mainstream support is five years so so um uh, and the extended support is colors out to 10 years uh so you know this server 2020 extended support takes us out to 2030. so it's a um, you know well understood well supported product and will be for well we're 2021 but you know a good nine years now before um it's a uh, you know, outside the unsupported. Now, one of the things that we talk about in the book a little bit is what's called the effective end of life. Effective end of life is where, although BizTalk server itself is functionally still supported, the platform components it depends on are no longer supported. So there's a clear outline in each in the chapter that says when is the effective end of life of every version of BizTalk server. Um, Needless to say, 2020 is out, but um, there's some, some surprise, surprisingly early dates. They're due to uh, end of life for SQL Server, uh, with the operating system for Windows, uh, you know, Visual Studio, Microsoft Office. They are all, you know, fundamentally going to drive the effective end of life of this like server. So we cover that in the book so that you're well aware of when those boundaries will come up, so that you can be prepared to upgrade in a timely fashion with, without suddenly being told, hey, your version of, you know, Windows Server 2008 is going to end of life. So very important. So we compiled that entire list of every end of life date for every version of every component that this type server depends on and outlines that. That was, that was fun. That was so easy. So next slide. There we go. Yay. Not yet. It's good. Yeah. Right. Don't you have it? I move to the next slide. Don't you see it? Yeah, yeah. Got it. Is it, oh. is it? Oh, luckily. Sandra, do you want to go with uh, chapter one? Covey.co. 